Hi everyone, Phil from Tech for Techs here. Have you ever found that your internet can be a little bit flaky, the Wi-Fi signal's not the best in one room and there isn't another, and then one minute it works and the next minute it doesn't? Well, this is where this product from Tender comes in. It's the Tender AC19 AC2100 dual band gigabit Wi-Fi router. We've got links in the description below if you're interested in purchasing it, and it's got a recommended retail price of $69.99. From high-speed networking to enterprise storage, at Orchil we have a solution for you. We're a UK-based vendor specialising in computer hardware components. So whether you're powering a data centre or upgrading a laptop, we can help. At Orchil, you'll get a dedicated account manager that gets to know you and your business, supporting you from our head office in Yorkshire. All our products are OEM compatible, tested in-house to ensure performance. And what's more, we offer a five-year warranty across all our SSD range and lifetime on our memory. Want to find out more about our partner programme? Visit Autual.com. OK, so we're looking at the Tender AC19, AC2100 dual band gigabit Wi-Fi router. This is a router, not a modem. So that means you have to plug this into an internet connection, like a, a smart hub or something else what's already got the internet for it to actually work and send the wireless signal around. So the antennas obviously send a better signal around your house and it allows faster speeds with the 5 gigahertz band. So that means it can go up to 2,033 megabits per second, which is pretty good. It's got things like a USB connection on the back so you can add in media devices and things like that through the USB. It's IPv6 as well so it's pretty much got everything you need in a router and again it's got these big antennas so you shouldn't have an issue with the wireless speed or range. On the side it tells you the basic specifications including the interface, antenna, the data rate as well as what the buttons do and so forth. Uh, so all your specifications are on the side there but we'll also include those in the description at the bottom of the page. Okay, on this side of the box, it tells you the system requirements. It says it's minimum Windows XP. And to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter what version of Windows it is or what version of Mac it is or anything like that. As long as it's got an Ethernet connection, it connects to that, it should really work, in all honesty. And if you're connecting anything up wirelessly, then it should work. It shouldn't be an issue with that, as long as it's something modern. And in all honesty, if you are using Windows XP, it's pretty much time to upgrade. But otherwise, that's pretty much it for that side. Okay, on the back of the box, it tells you what it does. It tells you all about the features on there. So the five gigahertz runs at 1,733 megabits. And then the 2.4 runs at 300. Obviously combine those together and that is your 2,033. You've also saying about the better 5G signal coverage and all that and what's in the actual box. It compares it against other products of the range. This is the AC19. It's comparing it against AC10 as well as the 8 there as well. And it shows you a picture of what it looks like on the back. So basically you'd connect up your modem there, so your cable modem or however you've got it connected up. And then you've got your extra LAN ports as well as your USB port and you can just about see the cutoff antennas on the back as well. And it tells you a few different things at the bottom about your Wi-Fi, scheduling, easy setup, dual band, tender cloud, wireless repeating and gigabit ports as well as the AC2100. From high-speed networking to enterprise storage, at Orchil we have a solution for you. We're a UK-based vendor specialising in computer hardware components. So whether you're powering a data centre or upgrading a laptop, we can help. At Orchil, you'll get a dedicated account manager that gets to know you and your business, supporting you from our head office in Yorkshire. All our products are OEM compatible, tested in-house to ensure performance. And what's more, we offer a five-year warranty across all our SSD range and lifetime on our memory. Want to find out more about our partner programme? Visit Orchil.com. 
Okay, so this is what's inside of the box. So first of all, we've got the manual, which is a quick installation guide, which is here. Let me just open it up. It's not the biggest in the world, uh, but it's straightforward. So if you're connecting up via a browser, it just tells you to go to tenderwifi.com and it should start the quick setup. And if you're using something like a smart device, it tells you how to set it up on there as well. So it's pretty straightforward. There is a bit more oomph on the back, tells you what the ports do and the lights and different things like that. But most people aren't gonna bother looking at this. So we're just gonna chuck this straight in the bin. Next, you've got your general liability license notices and all that, what no one reads as well. So get rid of that one. Right, next up you've got your cables, so you've got an Ethernet or LAN cable, depending on what you want to call it, or even an internet cable, as some people call them. Uh, this is one meter long, this is what you would connect from your router directly into your modem, or another router, depending on how you're connecting up. Then you've got your power cable, which is, well, a power cable. So it's a standard power cable. It's pretty straightforward. You pull that in the power socket and away you go. It's one and a half meters long. So it's as simple as that. Okay, so let's have a closer look at the router itself. It looks a bit, I don't know, like a sort of a space invader or whatever at the moment. Uh, but when you fold out the actual antennas on the sides, there you go. I don't know, it looks like some big walking mech or something like that. So they do look a little bit strange with all the antennas, but that allows you to get a better signal. Obviously you've got four antennas, a lot of routers only have a one, so hopefully four means better than one. So let's have a look at the design. So obviously it says tender on the front there. You've got where the lights will light up on the front. So you've got system, you've got WAN, LAN, as well as Wi-Fi on there as well. So a few different options. On the bottom, you've got some holes here which you can use to wall mount it if you so wished. And then it's got the serial number as well as all your SSIDs and all your different information like that on there as well. And on the back of the actual router, you've got obviously all your connections. So that's your power socket, so you plug your power cable in there. The blue one there is what you would connect up to your router, or should I say your modem or whatever other device you're connecting it up to, what's already got internet, so you want to share it on here. That one goes in there. That's what that yellow cable is they've um, given you. Don't get me wrong, you could use a different cable if you wanted. Uh, and then you've got four standard gigabit connections on the back. That's to connect up your PC, your TV, whatever it is you want, to your NAS and so forth. You've got four connections there. And obviously when being gigabit, that means they're really really fast you've got a reset button or a wps button as well so this will either reset the settings or it will allow you to connect up uh, devices with the ws uh, wps function usually printers and stuff like that which is a quick way of connecting up wirelessly without having to type all the codes and not all devices do support that though and then you've got a usb port so that allows you to connect things up using a ftp server so you can connect up stuff like uh, hard drives and other devices, even printers for printer sharing, directly through the router if you wanted. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is basically just plug it in, just show you how it works. Bear in mind, we're not doing the settings at the moment, so if you want to add a Wi-Fi password, which I strongly suggest you do, you'll need to go in the settings and set that up. This is just basically how you plug it in for the first time. So all you do is get your power cable, plug it in the power socket on the back, which is fairly straight and simple. You'll get one of the lights come on, and after a while you might get one or two. But first of all, you need to plug in your modem using a LAN cable. So your modem may be a BT hub, a router, cable modem, or something along that lines. You plug it into that blue socket there. That will then send the internet into this box. And what will happen after a minute or two, the rest of these lights will start coming on as it picks up an internet connection. And when it start, picks up the internet connection, it can then start sharing the internet connection. So obviously through these four antennas at five gigahertz, really fast, up to like the combined speed of 2033 megabits, which is pretty good. So if you want to connect up now with your phone, for example, you just go into settings, Find the router on there, you can see it says Tender, which is that one. 
and it's connecting straight up. And now if you can see on there, it says unsecured network. That's because we haven't set it up and put a password on, like I said. That means anyone can access this. So I really suggest you follow the instructions in the manual and set the Wi-Fi up, uh, or at least the password up, and you can change a few other settings as well if you so wish. Well, that's the basics to it. You're connected to the internet now. Uh, I can do a speed test, for example, go on here, press run, and this will check to see how fast the internet is actually going. And in here, we get usually between, it does fluctuate roughly around about 25 to 35 megabytes, sometimes a little bit higher, but it's getting roughly the speed we're getting. So probably even a slightly higher, around about 40 how you set it up obviously you need to plug it in and plug it into your internet device so modem or other router or switch or whatever you're connecting it up to once you've done that you need to connect up to the wi-fi or plug a cable into it if you're plugging a cable into it you don't have to worry about this step but the step where you have to connect to the wireless obviously if you're using it wirelessly you need to do so you need to find the name of the router in our case it's called tender c82820 you press connect, it's warning you it's unsecure there because we haven't set a password up on it. Obviously, that's what we're going to do now. Once it's connected, you basically go to the web address, which is tenderwifi.com. So tenderwifi.com, it'll say, welcome to the setup wizard. You press start. You can choose your connection type, so PPOE, dynamic IP or static. If you're not sure, you can press skip. So you press next and then you type in the password you want for your Wi-Fi. You can also type in a new name for your router. We'll put tender TFT in for now, so we know. And then we type in the Wi-Fi password. We're just gonna create a simple one, just so I can get in and out with ease on the video. And obviously, so you don't see my usual password. So that's a very simple password. Obviously, I recommend you use something using numbers, scrambled up letters, even symbols and so forth. So once you've done that, you press next. It's up to you if you save the password. If your browser prompts you, just bear in mind anyone using the machine will potentially be able to get into the router because you've saved the password. But obviously, that's up to you. Once you've done that, you'll need to go down to your wireless and then click on the name of the new router. So here we go so tender tft so we'll click on that press connect type in the password which we just did and press next do you want to obviously be discovered by other pcs and devices on the network that's totally up to you i'm pressing no okay i'm connected so basically you go back to the same web address again now it'll let you log into it and this will let you choose whatever options you want, change your settings and so forth. You can see on here it's already transmitting at 2.4 gigahertz as well as 5. And it's called Tender TFT. You can see internet's connected. You can also see the router. It's online. No USB devices. And it tells you about Wi-Fi extender, which we don't have. But if you click the link, it takes you to one and recommends. It tells you current speed of your internet. Again, that's not your maximum. That's your current speed. Uh, it also tells you there's a firmware update as well there as well. If we go on to internet settings, you can change those initial settings we did before, as well as changing DNS from automatic to manual. And you can see how long you've been connected for. That's a good idea to see if you've been disconnected and connected a lot. You'll be able to see how long you've since the last time it connected. So if you keep getting disconnected or not, you're not sure if it's the router or your device. You can check to see if the router's been online all that time. You've also got Wi-Fi settings. You've got Wi-Fi name, password schedules, repeating, you've got all sorts on there, WPS, you've got power, uh, everything you probably want, you can set it as a schedule so it's only on certain times, it's really up to you how you have it set up. Guest network as well, so you can send out a second signal um, for guests, so you can set a timer on this, so let's just say you had a hotel or uh, a campsite or you're just inviting friends around and you didn't want them lots of access to your internet you can basically tell them tell them right this you can connect up using this wireless code and this new password uh, and they can or they can connect up for 
four hours, eight hours, or always. And you can limit the bandwidth for them as well, so they don't slow things down, which is good as well. So you've also got parental control on there, so you can go in there and choose what days of the week certain devices can connect up. You can see the name of my PC and the MAC address and everything there. Uh, so it gives you a rough idea. You've also got VPN settings as well. You would have to go through and set that up. So obviously that's up to you if you go down that route. You've got USB app as well. That's obviously if you've got a USB device plugged into the router. So an external hard drive, memory stick, something along that lines. IPv6, that's usually designed for more gaming. It's supposed to be quicker responses and this, that and the other. Some people like it, some don't. But you've got the option of turning it on and off as well on there more advanced settings bandwidth control and all your different things on there led control even and you've also got your system settings where you can change passwords reboot reset firmware upgrades backup and all your things you should need to do a quick speed test i'm basically one floor up and a hallway and two rooms across from the router now our main router or modem router is a one from virgin so it's a pretty decent one and our internet speed comes in at roughly around about 250 to 300 megabytes per second again this is our home address rather than a work address we've got faster internet here yeah i know it should be the other way around but that's how the internet's set up over here um so it gives you a rough idea of the speed differences so so what we're going to do is test it as you can see on the vm that's virgin media router i'm going to test the speed on here so run speed test and as you can see here it's saying that we're only getting around about 33 34 megabytes per second which is pretty slow it's because the signal's not great and it's just because that signal just doesn't get from the router quick enough basically or far enough it's just not it's just not that good in basics now if i do the same test now so if i switch my, uh, my network over to the tender tft so this is where we're using the tender router so let's let it connect up so that's how it's connected and we run the same speed test now wow look at the difference we're getting over 200 megabytes per second it's not necessarily that the actual wireless is faster where it probably is a little bit um it's the actual fact that it's able to send the signal better because it's got those four antennas on it compared to the normally you have one in most routers you can see the upload speeds practically the same uh, the latency again is pretty much the same but the actual download speed there is a huge difference and again we're looking between 32 and 214 it's roughly eight nine times faster for the location we've got this in i've tried this in other locations in the house if you're next to the router we get practically the same speed but if we go to different areas even outside down the gardens we seem to be getting constant speed throughout the house around about that 214 megabytes per second don't get me wrong it's not as quick as using something like a mesh based system to spread out your wireless signal and so forth we do have a mesh based system available and just to give you an idea uh, let me just enable my ethernet because i've got it disabled at the moment enable and enable there we go so we're going to redo these same tests now basically using the ethernet okay so if i do the test again using that ethernet connection you can see here it's shooting up to as i was saying between that 250 to 300 megabytes slightly over 300 actually it's doing good today but as you can see mesh system is still a lot better so something like a tender nova mw6 which we've got here or the mw12 or even the mw3 if you've got slower internet um that may be a better option but if you're just wanting one router don't have to mess about with lots of different things and having boxes in every single room then this router really does well speed everything up quite a bit if you've got a poor signal around your house.